Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We provide fan-oriented and analytic discussions on a variety of animated shows, movies, and anime, currently featuring Steven Universe, Miraculous Ladybug, the new Powerpuff Girls, Star vs. the Force of Evil, and Ruby. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Delaney Stilwell. Hey, y'all. Today, Delaney and I will be discussing the latest episodes of Star vs. the Forces of Evil, Into the Wand, and Pizza Thing. Uh, Star is back. Yay, Ooh. we took about a month off there, but um, we're back here weekly with uh, Star vs. the Force of Evil discussions. We cover Star every week on the Overly Animated podcast. You can check us out every week that it's on. You can check us out at OverlyAnimated.com or search for the Overly Animated podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, your favorite podcatcher. If you're listening here on YouTube, uh, you could subscribe to us here as well. So, yeah, we're going to get into, into the one and pizza thing. Spoilers for these episodes. Check out our previous star discussions if you're new, and there's, you find those on our YouTube channel or on our website. Uh, yeah, let's get right into it, Delaney. Um, two very different episodes here. <laughs> yes. Uh, we'll have more to say about the first one, but what were your reactions in general to both of these episodes? Uh, Into the Wand was really good. Um, I think it was probably more in depth than we anticipated. I think there's a lot of going. We're still kind of dealing with Star and her mom. Uh, there's just there's some neat stuff here. I really enjoyed the like the Queens of Muni's past kind of deal, like um, Star's ancestors. That was pretty cool. Uh, the whole concept was very not Doctor Who, well, a little Doctor Who, I guess. Like timelines running together. Like it was pretty cool. Um, very different. It, we're definitely de- dealing with a different Star, more mature Star, which I enjoy. <laughs> We've been kind of getting to this point. And I don't know, it was just neat. Uh, even Glossrick was less annoying than usual. Yeah, because I had both that hate thought him. too. Yeah, he was less annoying and Like, he was fine. Glossrick was okay. Maybe yeah. because he was not very much in this episode and he wasn't being super creepy. Yeah. And um, Pizza Thing was, it definitely took a turn I didn't anticipate. Uh, it was just, I mean, it was a fun, it was a fun episode. It was fine. Uh, Ponyhead's all right. It, it was good. It was kind of nice to have a Ponyhead Marco episode and it was good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of Into the Wands. I think that, um, I mean, that's the first half of the episode was fine. It was nothing special, kind of your typical psychological cartoon episode. Um, but then we get into, you know, maybe my favorite moment of the season, uh, just the seeing Toffee in the portrait. Right. Uh, I mean, as Toffee's new number one fan, as uh, <laughs> I don't know if I originally was, but since he has been gone, I've been yearning for the Toffee and he's back and, or, you know, he's not back, but he's in the portrait and labeled as immortal. Which means he'll be coming back. Uh, you heard it here Amazing. first. Amazing. Yeah. Heard it here first. Yeah. No, I just thought that that entire sequence with um, from the portraits to uh, bringing the finger back was incredibly executed. There's nothing super, uh, you know, in complex narratively about it. It was just a case of completely ex- executing on the mythology advancement that you have. Really good stuff. Like one of the big season highlights, I think, is uh, just the the Toffee portrait and uh, everything involving that. And, and it ties uh, a few other things together, too. Like we're obviously going to have to talk to um, Moon more. Like uh, Yes, yeah. The star's mom arc has been a big thing this season. And uh, I don't know if it's been – nothing's really a big thing on the show. But it's been consistent uh, in a lot of these episodes. And bringing uh, Toffee into it is going to be great. And maybe an actual substantial talk with Star and her mom. Yeah, that's that's very exciting uh, how the finger plays into it. And uh, just uh, – yeah, just very, very much liked all that. That was really, really good. Um, we're going to get into that. I mean, pizza thing, i super, super down on. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> but, you know, uh, well, I'll save the negative comments for later. But let's get into into the one. So, um, yeah, we want to discuss Toffee, of course. Um, the, another big thing is that this is a kind of a star solo episode. Glass yeah. Rick's there. No, not much Marco here. Uh, I thought that was good, especially because next episode doesn't have much star. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what are your thoughts? Do you agree with me that this this uh, in the what the grandma room is that what she calls it? Is yeah, the, the grandma room. Yeah, I feel like I do you agree with me. This is like a highlight of the season. Oh no, I think this is probably a highlight of the series. Uh, like not just the season. Like it's so great. Like it's beautifully animated, and like to finally kind of we're putting more of the pieces together. Like this idea, like it's definitely a monarchy, and like it's which we'd kind of pieced together from like the names and like how it's passed down through like the female line. And it's just so cool. Look at all these ancestors with their different names. We even have like one that's kind of like evil, Eclipse, yeah. the Queen of Darkness. And then yeah. what really struck me was uh, Star's mom, how young she looks in her portrait as opposed to the other portraits. So I think it's kind of, we're kind of doing this parallel here. Like the battles that Star will have to face are kind of similar to the battles that her mom had to face. Yeah, I thought so I thought that cool. was Star at first in the, in the yeah, portrait of no, her mom. Right. That was really well done. Yeah. 
Uh, I, I'll say this is off the top of my head, and I just saw watch, so I didn't have much time to react. I think this is maybe the number two moment of the series behind yeah. the end of uh, Blood Moon Ball. I'm not saying this episode is better than Mr. Candle Cares or some of the others. Like I wouldn't put this in my top five, maybe even top ten. I just think this specific moment uh, stands out to me as so impeccably done. Uh, you, you know this 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 sequence. I, I I really really commend the the team on that. Um, yeah, one like Star's mom fought um Toffee. Two Toffee's like uh was there with Star's mom. Toffee's immortal. Is Toffee immortal because of the dark spell cast by Star's mom, or is it uh or is he like uh, been an immortal monster this entire time? The Toffee's coming back like the finger stuck in Star's one like ties back the end of last season again. Um. Just all of it really clicks for me. Like, really, really good. No, it's like, this is just amazing. And also, isn't something like the wand is passed down, isn't it? Yes, the wand is passed down. So, ooh, like, this is cool stuff. Like, this is just good. This is the mythology stuff we've been waiting for. This stuff with, with her mom we've been waiting for. This is, I feel like this is the beginning of a really good. This is kind of the moment in this season I think we've been waiting for to really get somewhere. Yeah, I mean, at the same time, we're not really getting anywhere. But, right. You know, I, this is cl- a big. A it big feels moment. like a moment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the show moves so slowly that anything kind of registers, and it's not necessarily that. It's uh, I feel like it's not necessarily that it's a big mythology advancement. That's why it's so good. I think it's just because of how well it's executed and how no, well it ties like, to the themes of the season. Scene. Yeah. And like the way, it just the whole way it's animated and the pacing, it's just great. Like it just yeah, it felt like it's, a it's, moment. It's and very just... meticulous. It's very just uh, gorgeous. Yeah. Um. Even yeah. Even the readings of the past queens, which don't mean anything and won't right. mean anything, was really cool. Yeah. The eclipse of the queen of darkness was the best, and stars like ooh, bad girl. Yeah, that was yeah, the best. That, so was, that was a great line read, and that was like one of the a great reaction from star. Um. Yeah, and then uh, like her mom mooned the undaunted. Like that is so like that is so awesome. Undaunted, like that yeah. is so cool. And yeah, seriously thought that was Star. And then um yeah, it says uh the the immortal monster haunted by the darkest spell of Moon the Undaunted. So very interesting. Like Star's mom practiced dark magic. Is that a thing on the series? Right, Where like yeah. is there dark magic versus light magic? I don't know if we've gotten into that, but that's really interesting. And um how is the finger cutting off relate to the hand on the wand, I guess, from – which I'm not remembering super well from the end of last season, but that right. was the thing. And, uh, y- you know, just uh, the ramifications of Toffee and the mythology of the series. I mean, I've been yearning for a larger Toffee involvement, and this is like placing Toffee as potentially more important than Ludo. That's like a great, great idea. Yes, like, thank, thank That's you. a very yes. good read Lust. on uh, on the your characters that um, – not that Ludo's – you know, there's a role for Ludo in the show, but I think it's less prominent than he currently is. Yeah. Um, and in a different role than with Animal Companions, but uh, yeah, I think that uh, Toffee is an end boss is is really a good idea, and it relating it to Star and her mom, like this is a really interesting to get things to get into. And we're not really saying anything concrete because they don't give us that much, so it's going to be a lot of speculation and stuff. Um, but yeah, just that, just the ram- potential future ramifications thematically, how it blends in, the mood of it in the in the episode, how it was executed, just all of that. Um, right. And so the the finger is the thing that was um, they're looking for the thing that doesn't belong in Star's memories. So this was the, the finger. It, all of this is very abstract. It's very um, glossaric stuff, which doesn't make sense. But it's um, the so in, the finger was stuck in the wand and removing it's going to make the wand better, maybe, or is it from yeah, Star's yeah. memory? Uh, well, that, what's the, the the wand functions on? Well, okay, this is the weird thing because we had like the our other into the wand kind of episode where it was like this is, this I is what this our was a location. continuation of the last episode of yeah. first. Yeah, it's yeah, this, it's a little weird. Unfortunate um, timing because I don't think they're supposed to be related. Right. Granted, I do think they kind of make sense. Like the user in the wand will be different than like how the wand operates itself. So if the wand, so the wand is an extension of Star, and it's the extension of her memories. Yeah. So even just the narwhal. Removed- yeah. No. Go ahead. I just feel like the memories are more like the interface of fixing the wand. And like this is how like Star has to deal with it. Yeah, it could be a glossary invention intervention type thing, or maybe it's like how that maybe like the inner workings of the wand are separate from Star's connection to the yeah, wand. I yeah. think I think that's how that has to work. Yeah, I'm fine with both of them existing in the mythology. I think that's fine. I mean, in the previous wand episode uh, that we got, uh, last thing we saw, a Spider with a top hat, which is. Um. Yeah, I think one of the best episodes of the season. But uh, it's it's it was obviously never going to relate to anything else right. that would that would happen. So 
Um, that's that's fine. It, it doesn't need to be, you know, it doesn't even if it contradicts whatever. It's kind of a one off episode, but right. um, yeah, it did like it's just the beginning of the episode seeing all the narwhals sick and like last the end of that episode kind of had like all the uh, the things in the wand kind of like beaten in battle outside. Right. I was like, oh, is this a thing? You know, but no, it wasn't. Um, but yeah, I think that. Uh, this is a, it's you know, this is an excuse to do our kind of psychological introspection type episode. The the thing that comes to mind uh, the most is the I think maybe episode ten of the first season of Voltron, uh, where they have the like, what's the ship is affecting everyone and like yeah. making them inside their head. Like this is, a, this is a classic episode trope, and um, I think the, I think they it, up until this part where they go they. What they do at first is like a fine rendition of the, that trope of that episode. Like so there's multiple stars and it's like, oh, they'll replace you if uh, a future version of yourself. That's kind of clever. Just seeing Marco stuff. It, it was fine up to that point. But then just like I love this idea of like taking this tropey episode and like launching off of it into a mythology, into this big mythology moment for the series. I think that's like a really good idea to, um, you know, play with tropes in that way. And it's not necessarily like a subversion. It's just like uh, expanding it. But and- you're using it like they're, they're using it for like their own devices and it worked really well they're not just playing it like uh oh well the psychological episode and everything will go back to normal at the end they're saying oh we're going to use this type of episode to advance our story like that's that's great like that's what the tropes are for like that's 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 an excellent use. like she actually like found like this is actually new information that star didn't know about and because she said she hadn't been in the grandma room since she was like a baby yeah i'm, I'm interested like why she's able to recall the contents of that room right. Yeah, I guess if she saw it at some point, it's stored in the wall. Well, well, the thing, well, the thing is, like when you're talking, yeah, we're talking about memories. Like, there's you have a lot of memories that you yourself can't access, but they're there, right? So, uh, like, because yeah. our memories are weird. So, like, yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense that it's there, and she just can't readily yeah. recall. I them. mean, if you want to get technical, like, uh, if Star was a human, this, you know, she wouldn't be storing memories from uh, right. an infant. Uh, we can you can play this off as her being a human, right? But right, uh, or or you know, the star, the wand is passed down. Does Star have access to her mom's memories? Yeah, that's the thing. That was the thing too that I was considering was because yeah. it's passed down. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting. Which, which is why there. the I mean, that's why the fingers in the wand is because it's not. I don't think it's because of Star. It's because of her mom, right? Or am I confused? Um, it's not clear, I think, because yeah. there's there because um we saw Star's mom cutting off Toffee's fingers, so maybe that gets stuck in the wand from that. Or is it because of uh Toffee's uh dismembered hand at the end of last right, season? Yeah. Is that we the reason? No. So I think that's kind of, that it's supposed to be like an interesting parallel between the yeah. two of them fighting Toffee, but um the ramifications of why the fingers there, it's very unclear to me, yeah. And I'm not I'm not fully I've never been f- fully clear on the end of last season and like yeah. how it played out and stuff. This show's very abstract at, at key times sometimes, um which is fine, it's kind of its own thing. Um but yeah, just uh very interested where we're going with uh with all that. Um what about the uh, what about this as an episode for like Star's character? Do you think this is like a big uh, Star and development or like just a showcase of her episode? I think it's a showcase. Like we had the Star being kind of very mature. Like we kind of so we have the like I think the scene that really exemplifies this is you have Star and she's like on her little makeshift chariot and the other Star comes up and she's like, "Hi, I'm Star Butterfly," and like you know the kind of like ditzy little Star Butterfly voice. And then stars like, who are you? And like, they kind of have that conversation and like the stars sound different. But then we get to this point where star is kind of, and then she's like, and then she like sasses the other stars, like yeah. stay away, forget your own timeline, like this, this, and this. And I think it is a showcase of like kind of, kind of stars maturity. Like she's taking this very seriously and she's not kind of, she's not like freaking out exactly about the timeline thing, which normally star doesn't really freak out in general. But like she like she doesn't lose focus in this episode, which I think is a real like real example of her character. Like yeah, obviously I, she's like, oh I don't really know what the thing is I'm supposed to find, which is typical star, but then she really does focus like when the castle appears, she's like, I have to go there. And like she's really focused in this episode. We've seen serious star before, so I don't think this is new star. No, it's not new, but yeah. like it's definitely more of it because we don't really get serious star a lot. Yeah. So like to have also and have her in her own episode, like I think it's definitely showcasing like this more mature star. Yeah, definitely, and I think it presumably will as as star gets older, she'll have to kind of in the future queen will be forced into more serious roles. Well, stuff also like. This. like in the beginning of the episode where she was like, she closed the curtains to her mirror and she's like talking about her mom. She didn't really talk about her mom in her usual like, oh, mom, blah, blah, blah. She was just like, as the future queen of Muni, blah, 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 blah. 
And yeah, she's kind of being a little brat about it, but like it was very, it's very different than these previous mentions of her mom. Yeah, maybe like, she's owning up to her her future role more right. more than normal. Well, especially at the end of the episode where she's like, "I think my mom's right. I'm not tall enough to ride this ride." Like old, like. Oh, season one star never would have said anything like that. Never in a million yeah. years. So like stuff like that. I think it's really showing like how much she's kind of, like how how much she's grown, like how she's maturing. It's a really great showcase for Star's character. One thing I love going back to something you said earlier, Star talking to the other the clone of herself or whatever, the future version that was going right. to replace her. And I, I love sometimes in these types of things, it's like, oh, that's an alternate version of yourself. That's a more stupid version. But this is just a different aspect of Star. Like this is like, sure, she was seemed a little bit simple, but this right. is like, uh, you know, like a simple p- portrait of of like normal Star. Um, but like this is um this is this is like a different this is serious star talking to like you know carefree star like this the show showcasing different types of her character and then after she leaves the the more carefree star kind of gets her own scene and it's like oh she is her own agency because like right. she has to deal with the, the the later star so i kind of love how they do that with regards to like the different facets of star um yeah the, the stuff with the mom's really interesting i think this is interesting like if she's really if she's more eager to uh showcase more uh if she's e- if she's more eager to take on more of her future responsibility, uh, like how that contrasts with her rejection of that previously, because um, really I don't know if I've seen her. This is maybe the most eager. I not necessarily eager, but she's like, okay, I'll deal with this. Like, right. uh, and it, certainly this wasn't like a, qu- a queen role. It's just like her dealing with something that was wrong with her wand. But it seems right. it seems like she was stepping into this uh, this princess role more than normal, and how that. Uh, affects this uh, this path of rejection of the monarchy type thing that we were maybe going on before. Uh, do you think that does this, this, this mean Star might not want to uh, not become queen? Maybe she does. Is, is any any indication that that might be the case? I think so. I mean, especially kind of this awe we saw in the grandma room, like. You know, she's reading all the, you know, the stories of, like, her ancestors, and she's, like, looking at, like, the tapestry of her mom, and, like, I do think this is very, like, I think there is, like, I think that's where we're going with Star in general, is this acceptance of Queen, because, like, basically this is all broken down into, like, this very simple, basic, like, teenage rebellion kind of thing, but then really I think we're going to see more about, like, star stepping into this role and how she wants to be queen how she wants me to be because we've definitely seen there's been some friction not a lot of it because like we, this show doesn't typically focus on the things we think are more important but there's been some friction i think between like how muni is and what star thinks you should be and i yeah, think and- i think i think we're getting there like i think this is part of this like star start one stars accepted her training she's actually training she's taking all mm-hmm. seriously and she really wants to fix her wand and she's actually practicing and doing all this stuff and I think she really is wanting to, like, I think she is, like, kind of beginning to come to terms with, like, this is who she will be. This is this is such a great uh, furthering of this arc we've been on, because you're right, there's been a little bit of acceptance of, like, training with Glossary. Whereas before it seems like, oh, I just don't want to be queen. Right. I love how the portraits showcase how you apply that to uh, potentially her being queen. Also, we- they had, I really, I really wish they would have focused on a little bit more, but, like, they were, wa- they were weaving her tapestry. Which I thought that was really cool. Is that what Glosswork was being I think that's in? what it was. That was yeah, her tapestry. That's an interesting concept, yeah, that they're weaving hers. But yeah, these portraits, I think, showcase this really interesting concept that we're probably, like you said, where the show is going of, is Star doesn't need to reject being queen in order to be herself. Right. Um, there's all these versions of uh, past queens that are all really different. And we had the shy queen, we have the monster carver, and we had like the queen of darkness. So it, she doesn't need to be like her mom to be queen of Muni. There's all these past versions. Like you could see Star being, except for the shy one, kind of. <laughs> you could yeah. see Star the monster carver, or you know, not Star the darkness, but uh, Star like, the undaunted. Star, yeah, Star mm-hmm. the undaunted. Star, like you know, maybe reject like the the queen of darkness, like rejecting the typical thing and like right. mar- marrying a monster. Like that's re- like that's a really interesting concept. Um, but yeah, uh, that just start making this role of queen her own. I think is clearly is a big kind of theme of this episode of where like maybe Star would be okay with it if she it doesn't have to be like the stuffy uh, uh, typical royalty role that her mom seems to fall into. And maybe that's something her and her mom will discuss in the future. Yeah, I think think so. Especially like I just like we're coming to we're co- we're definitely going to this point where Star needs to talk to her mom. And like what this is getting out of me, and I think her mom's gonna. There's, it's kind of be like it's kind of be one of those like it's kind of one of those moments in Brave, where it's kind of like oh, like 
yeah, I want you to be this way, but you don't have to be this way like me, and like kind of like coming to terms with like what it means to be queen. Yeah. At first, I was like brave, and then I was like, how "Have we never talked about brave in a relationship I know, before?" Right? It's like literally the same thing. Like it's literally the same thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's it's, it's a good parallel, and um, I, yeah, I, I love how the advancement of where they're taking this. I mean. I'd still love to get into Star just rejecting uh, the monarchy completely and maybe how it relates to the monster rebellion that seems to be brewing and stuff like that. I, I still think we're going to have to deal with that. Like maybe Star is the one who uh, kind of like settles that if that breaks out because she, uh, you know, like uh, relates to them, but uh, relates to the, the learns to relate to the monsters, but um, like the, the struggles of the, the people or whatever, because the monsters are kind of the people in this, in this right. uh, concept too. So I think, yeah, I think all, uh, getting into all of that's going to be really interesting stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm yeah. excited about it. Yeah. Great. Yeah, great stuff here. I mean, I don't expect to hit on this theme for like 10 more episodes. Right. That's how the show works. But uh, at the same time, we've, we've, you know, there's, if you, we are painting everything we've talked about, it's kind of a broad, uh, in the broad theme. Uh, we've, we've been doing it a few times this season. So I yeah. think it's, it's, so we're hitting on thread. it. It's very yeah. subtle, but we're getting yeah. there. Uh, toffee predictions. Will we see toffee, uh, renewed this season? I think so. I think toffee, he's the, not necessarily like, in the middle of the season, but I think at the end, like yeah. Toffee's going to be this kind of like force that we're just going to have to deal with. Like he's not necessarily like I mean, he's on like, screen alive. Toffee, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, you can't show me Toffee in the portrait. Say he's immortal and not give me Toffee this season. Right, like, that has to happen. I think I agree. It's the season finale. Uh, but I mean, the, the season's long though, so you know maybe. Well, I could see that. it being something like they don't actually face Toffee, but we see like a little scene of Toffee. Like, yeah, this is the halfway point, by the way, between the beginning and end of the season. Mm-hmm. So this is maybe this is like the mid-season finale in their eyes. Who knows what the ordering is? But yeah, yeah this is could be setting up the the finale. But yeah, we got to bring Toffee back, and I'm glad to see. Um, you know how much does Toffee know? Like, because Toffee right. see, from the Toffee we saw in season one, it didn't seem like he knew things past his current life. It's see like <laughs> does he like regenerate or something? I don't know. Like, how does Toffee work? Let's let's get into right. that. We'll see. He's, yeah, uh, very excited for more Toffee. Um, okay, uh, let's get into Pete's thing. Not as in depth mm-hmm. discussion. Um, Delaney, what general thoughts on this episode? I love the concept of giving a Marco and Pony Ed showcase. Yes, um, I do like that concept. So, do you think that they executed on that? It was fine. It was, it was funny. It was Ponyhead Marco, Marco and Pizza. I'm shocked Marco wasn't on his bike, but I mean, it was, it was good. I don't understand the concept of going to pick up pizza 15 minutes before the show starts, but whatever. It was fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, I don't need to get, I don't know. I don't need to get into this too much. I don't have a strong desire to berate the show. Like, yeah. sometimes I don't like episodes, you know. Uh, pizza thing's probably my least favorite episode of TV this year that I've seen. Um, <laughs> like, I, I, it's, I don't say that harshly, you know. I just, I didn't connect to the humor at all. I thought it was, um, you know, pretty awkward. I didn't, I like it that was, whole, it was It was a little weird. It was supposed to be awkward in like a funny way. And I think that this show has done different types of humor. Uh, We've talked about that a lot. It like has different themes and it tries to be funny in different ways. I think this was like a clear miscue from different types of things that it's done. It has like the weird stuff that it does. Um, It has, uh, you know, the the Mina episode, which had its own like floaty type of humor and that really succeeded. I think this tried to be this kind of like uh, uh, this kind of like cringe humor. Um, yeah. yeah, which I hate. So maybe that's coloring my, my viewing of the episode. I just think the whole scene with star and, uh, the, the pizza guy, uh, with, um, Emilio. Yeah. Just, yeah. I hated that. I hated that scene. Like really, really hated that. Uh, and then, uh, I, the kid, like the kid coming in and making a speech after that's like, you know, just like trying to bring everything together and like, Oh, we're lampshading that this is being like, we're like reconciling everything and it's going, it's funny. I hated that too. Um, yeah, it was the, just an awkward, weird episode. I mean, it was like funny at times, but like, eh. yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, other than those two, it was fine. Other than those two parts, uh, I don't like that them like, oh, let's make a pizza. Oh, this is so random, you know, and then. Right. Yeah. I, I, but like the begin, Okay, so like the first scene, I liked that. Um, it's like, I love that they're going to watch a telenovela. I, I, yes. I, I would really love them bringing in Hispanic culture elements to this. Um, like oh, yeah, it's, definitely. Like, like it's like great that more. like the Diaz family uh, like is like not right, white and like bringing more of that, especially after having seen Victor and Valentino, like the uh, recent pilot, uh, Cartoon Arc pilot. You can check that out uh, on their Cartoon Arc YouTube channel. But um, just I'd love bringing in more aspects like that. And then watching telenovela is great. And um, just the, the beginning of the episode uh, was fine. And then... And at the end with Marco and Ponyhead, like, falling asleep together, I think is fine. Yes. Uh, everything in between, I feel like. Is <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, it just, 
I don't know. It just it drops oh, well, the ball around the skinny jean dance. That doesn't yeah. really pick one it back up. One other part I liked was um, Ponyhead wearing the skinny jeans. Yes, yeah, like, no, that was that's, funny. Yeah, that's a Delaney joke. That's I one like of the that. things that yeah. Delaney enjoys is making fun of character models. I do. Yeah, I like because it's like oh, the joke is like oh, Ponyhead. Uh, like this episode was on and off. Like oh, the joke is Ponyhead wants skinny jeans. That's funny because she can't wear them, and then she actually does wear them. She actually, it's like, bad, yeah, it's great. That's a good joke. But then. Um, Bringing the, and then the cop comes over and it's like, oh, we're getting to the weird escalation type humor. Yeah. Um, and then they like all stay at the party. And then uh, that until the kid ma- and the kid making the speech. Like that's the real down part of the episode. Like for me. Ponyhead stole a car. One th- yeah, that, well, and Ponyhead's driving, you know, whatever. And the show it. is so weird. We keep doing things like this. And then Marco's like, I'm going to go to jail. Like Marco, you never go to jail. Calm down. Like you do things like this all the time. We're bringing back safety kid Marco a little bit there. Yep. One thing I did like in the, that middle section, which was very bad, was uh, Ponya just like making a new car. Right. I thought that's really interesting. Like, well, she can just fix things. Like she used, she did that a few times with her magic. She would just like do whatever, and it's like, okay, Ponyhead, all right. I like Ponya just like being like super powerful and just like unaware that that's important. Yes, it's like, great. That's a really good concept. Yeah. Well, she just uses it for like her stupid reasons, and it's great. It's kind of like Star in a way. Yeah, yeah, that is. She is like Star in that way. Yeah, Star is also kind of all powerful and just yeah. like, it's over his job. But there's a good, some good pony stuff in here. Uh, pony had stuff in here, regardless. Um, but overall, you thought it was a fun episode. It was fun. Like I enjoyed it. It wasn't like amazing or anything. It definitely wasn't like the funniest episode. But it, it was yeah. okay. Yeah, no, I hated it, but that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's okay. I I, I don't care because Into the Wand was so good. You know? No, Into the Wand was amazing. Yeah. So. Let's take uh, listener Steve's comments on on if you want to get your star comments in the comments on you can get them in. We watch a few hours before it airs on TV, but anyway, um, he says uh, yeah, he liked Into the Wand. Um, I he's, I know this is out there, but do you think Queen Butterfly and Toffee and Toffee had a history? Maybe they were friends at one point and they tried uh, together to the end to get humans and monsters, uh, peacefully and something went wrong and they became enemies. Um, and as far as Toffee's concerned, Queen Butterfly betrayed him and that he had so much hatred. That's why he knows so much about the wand and its spells. So that's interesting. So that's kind of where we're talking about might happen with star. Would it have happened in the past with queen? Like that's, you know, that's the type of thing they could totally get into. I see no indication of that on the show like right now, but I mean, I feel like they're going to do something. Like, we need to talk more about the relationship between humans and monsters. And, I mean, I definitely think it's a possibility. I don't know how. I mean, it's just so hard. Like, I think we're going to have a we're, this talk that Star is going to have to have for her mom. is going to be kind of reconciling these ideas. Like, this warrior queen with how we know Star's mom to be currently. So, we'll have to yeah, see. Yeah, I do love the potential concept of Queen Butterfly, like, being kind of Star-like in her youth. Yeah. And, like, like oh, she, you know, Star would want to, like make a truce between the monsters and the 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 royal family oh queen butterfly already did that like that'd be really right. interesting yeah anything like that like getting into past queen butterfly and like that being said I, I i do need to know why she's like she is now right yeah um, same because we see things from star's perspective so much it comes across as such a clear negative right uh and it's like yeah we're kind of judging her lifestyle but also she doesn't seem happy and uh right. i would like to really know why she is the way she is if she was different from before like i think that's kind of crucial to yeah to get i think this might have to do with like maybe Maybe this dark magic that she did or like whatever this obvious conflict they had with the monsters again yeah maybe she like hurt someone and now she's like super careful and proper right. to like make sure she doesn't go back to the dark right. magic type thing are we getting too much into harry potter if it's like dark magic <laughs> i don't know things too much of it harry potter like magic like typi- magic. kind of typical fantasy i mean though, it's typical like, fantasy granted yeah. when you're dealing with magic it's just kind of typical um i do think it helps that like the magic and star in this show is just so ridiculous it's hard to imagine what dark magic would be like <laughs> you know honestly even now that i'm thinking about it, even avatar like is bending is kind of magic and then like yeah. blood bending is kind of dark magic yeah. like I, everything does that so right Anyway, uh, last there's thing. always there's always like dual. Everything has to be dual. So yeah, uh, typical themes. Yeah. Uh, last thing we want to point out from Steve's comments is that he thinks well, we found our Telemundo camp pining hearts. Uh, Perhaps. So, so so is uh, what is this? A fiesta de la noche? Is that what they called it? I'm trying to look. Yes, at something like that. I yeah. just heard De La Noche at the end. I was yeah, like, okay. Yeah, Fiesta De La Noche. Are we going to get back to this as like a recurring like parody show? It I hope to, so. I think it's in the, it just functioned in the course of this episode as just like being them right. out. Like it's like, oh, this is ridiculous. They're watching a show of what they could be doing while they're just sitting yes. there, you know. And so like from Ponyhead's perspective. But I would like like a recurring parody show on Star. That's like that our favorite fun. thing. Yeah. Please. So, yeah, let's do that. Um, last comments on pizza thing. It was okay. It was okay. Yeah. 
but uh yeah, definitely interested to see your guys' comments on into the wands uh and also beats things you defend it if you know it's just yeah. my opinion just uh, when i say i hate it imo you know put imo before everything obviously um in my opinion but uh yeah let us know comments youtube comments uh, or uh tumblr us or on our website at overlyanimated.com you can click on this the link to this podcast article and then you can leave comments there um definitely a lot to speculate about on into oh, the yeah. wands toffee's yeah. back yeah, Toffee's back. I'm very excited. Give me the Toffee uh, fan art and like the the fanfics of new Toffee and Star. Oh, how toffee long until we moon. see the first? How long until we see Toffee X Moon shipping? And I mean, like, I feel uh, like it's probably fanfics it's about them. That's where I thought. Uh, that's where I thought Steve's ask was going. But yeah, like I think it we'll definitely be. my first uh, the first fan. It probably already exists. The fan. This episode has been out for a few hours online, so maybe it already exists. But yeah, um, very interested to get into into all of that. Uh, uh, next week is uh, Paige Turner and mm. Naysaya. I pretty, I believe that's how you pronounce that. Interesting. I I imagine Ponyhead is involved somehow. In Naysaya? Probably. That sounds like a Ponyhead word. Yeah. yeah. I, maybe I just pronounced it like that because it's, you know. So we'll okay. see. We have been, uh, we're recording this pre Darren Nefsi uh, posting like the posters on Tumblr. She posts those on her Tumblr uh, for so we get a better idea of the episode probably tomorrow uh, of what these are about. But yeah, ch- uh, we'll be back then to discuss Star. You can check us out at overlyanimated.com. If you're listening on YouTube, please subscribe to us there for more Star content and our other podcasts. Um, you can consider supporting us on patreon.com slash overlyanimated. Thank you very much to our patrons, Mitch Cordell, Beatrice, Nate, Andy, Jamie, Rachel, John, Ryan, Catherine, Taylor, Dave, Andre, John, Finish, and Victoria, and Katrin, a.k.a. Fever, Mitch, Corona, C.B. Change Nathan Fillion, Buzz Like Your Ma'am on Richard Rose, Daniel Robert, Brian Kitkat, Needle Diamond Day, Jewel Garfield, Fusion Skylark, Patron Katrin, um, uh, Justin and Michelle, Steven Yunus Roundtable is upcoming on Thursday. Um, Steven Yunus is back the week after that. Star and back on Monday. Maybe no new Ruby this weekend. We'll see on that. But yeah. The, who knows? Who knows? I haven't heard confirmation yet. But yeah, so that's good stuff. And um, we'll be back uh, with more Star then. Let us know what you thought. And we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.